Hello, everyone, and welcome to a special event. Welcome to uh, OSRPG Presents Runners in the Shadows, a holiday one-shot. I am very excited to bring you this episode, and so is the rest of the staff, and we are just going to hop right in because I know you're seeing a lot of new faces here on the screen, and so I'm very excited to introduce to you pretty much a full brand new uh, collection of cast members. And so I'm going to pass it over right now to Olivia. Go ahead, Olivia. Hi, everyone. I'm Olivia. I'm going to be playing Clocks, the hacker. <laughs> awesome. Um, and then I'll pass it over to Goose. Hello, everybody. My name's uh, Goose. Uh, I go by Godlike Goose on Twitch. Um, you can check me out over there. I'd also like to give a shout out to another streamer called X Anto Grasso. X A N T O G R A S S O. Uh, I'm going to be playing Gregor the Muscle. That's awesome. Oh, and I love the the Anto <laughs> shout out by the way. Anto, we love you. Thank you so much for the support. Yeah. Um, you're amazing. Um, now we're gonna pass it over to Indio. Indio, go ahead, buddy. Hey, what's up, folks? I'm Last Indio. I'll be playing Jay Henley, uh, the Adept. AKA smoke, AKA um, spicy, uh, you know, kimchi spice, kimchi spice. Yes. <laughs> awesome. And uh, then we'll pass it over to Vince. Vince, go ahead and take it away. Hello, everybody. I'm Vince, and I will be playing Gravemaker, the trigger. I wrote Marksman, but. I think I think we're on the same page. You know, <laughs> technically his playbook's called the Trigger. My apologies, I forgot that it was Trigger and not the Marksman. <laughs> yeah, so, but uh, maybe maybe the Marksman makes more sense to people. We'll, we'll, we'll be okay. Uh, maybe I'll fix it in post or something. Uh, but yeah, awesome. <laughs> so we're very excited to bring you this episode. We're gonna go to a very short little intro thing here, and then we'll get started right away. Our night begins as our group of runners find themselves inside of their GMC Phoenix. Think of a, a futuristic mini van in a sense. They're armed and ready. They're heading down the road at 90 miles an hour, finding themselves chasing a man on a motorcycle. The man on the motorcycle is a person they know by the name of Smitty who's a wanted individual that they've been chasing for a few days now. They're on the clock though because they realize that they have a previous engagement that they all agreed to go to. But we'll get back to that later, as they find themselves driving, dodging through and past vehicles, chasing after Smitty. I wanna check in really quick though. Who is the one driving? Clocks the hacker. Clocks the hacker at the wheel, presumably Craig were in the back preparing, kimchi spice meditating, um, grave maker getting his weapon ready. You're Coming in behind the motorcycle, he quickly cuts across traffic um, and swerves into the other lane. Clocks, are you going to follow him or are you going to stay on your path and hopefully catch up to him? I'm going to swerve. You're going to swerve <laughs> following him into oncoming traffic? Okay, that is going to be a challenge roll. So I'm going to need something like finesse or something that, that would make sense for, for dexterous activity or, uh, you know, study or survey in order to, you know, choose an appropriate path to drive through. So go ahead. Gonna be study. <laughs> okay, study, go ahead. And I rolled a five. Okay, uh, that is what's known as a mixed success in this game. So anytime you roll a one, two, or three, it is a fail, but in this game, there's always failing forward. Anytime you roll a four or five, it is a mixed success, which means that you succeed, but with a consequence. And anytime you roll a six, that's a full success, or two sixes is known as a critical success. So in this case, you rolled a mixed success. So your mixed success, you swerve with him following through. There's a moment where you have to make a split second decision. You can stay at the back of Smitty's bike and keep in uh, tandem with his movement, or you're going to swipe into a car 
and lose him completely t-boning and then being thrown from the impact perhaps your 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 uh teammates who are not in seatbelts i don't know if they are who may not be in seatbelts might go flying forward um but that's a decision that you have to make clock so what's your decision are you going to chance smacking into the car and sticking on him or are you going to take a new approach perhaps finding like maybe a side street or maybe dodging out to the outer shoulder lane i'm gonna dodge around to the shoulder because okay. There's just enough room. Sure, perfect. So I'll need one more challenge from you. Feel free to use the same skill as you're, you know, you're taking in your surroundings at these high speeds, trying to prepare for the eventual, what would have been a collision had you not chosen to swerve over. So go ahead and so give I me one. A four. Uh, four. Okay, so one more mixed success. You go to the end. Um, this time, you're not thrown away by another vehicle. You're keeping pace with him, but the side of your GMC Phoenix is getting you know, cut and, and basically sparks are flying off of it. Cars are swerving out of your way as you go riding past them. There's a moment now for those of you in the back, most likely Gravemaker, I'm gonna say. I know Kim Chi has an extreme abilities and can perhaps do something, maybe that's something acrobatic, or perhaps Gravemaker might use this opportunity to open the door and maybe take a few shots. Where, where are you at, Gravemaker? And then we'll check in with Kimchi Spice. Go ahead. I am going to uh, bring up Popeye, my okay. my rifle. Popeye, I love and, it. And I will throw. He's he's in view, right? Smitty's in view. Yeah, he's he's ahead of. He, well, sorry, he's he's ahead of you to the right. Like basically, think of like there's oncoming traffic and there's the multiple lanes. He's basically swerving in the middle of the lane between vehicles, and you you are all the way on the shoulder, a little bit behind him and to his left. Okay. Yeah, I am going to I'll roll down the window using mm -hmm. the uh, the door. Well, it is uh, a minivan, so perhaps you just pop open that side door. Okay. You like click yeah. the little button. It's like bing, 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 and it goes opening. You know, while you have your rifle, <laughs> you're and going past I people. Will... People are looking at you like, what the fuck? You know that sort of thing. <laughs> oh, go ahead. Take aim. Okay. I bet you ten bucks I can stop him here, and. Does anybody take that bet before he fires? I sure did. Okay. So go go ahead and respond then, Kimchi. You're like, I'm good on it or something. What would you say? I said, I'm going to say, my inner self says you owe me 10 bucks. I love it. I love it. Okay. Take your shot, Grave Maker. Um, I presume you're planning to use, uh, what are you planning to use? Study, survey, finesse. What, what are your thoughts for this shot? Probably um survey for this particular one okay right? so you're because it's trying to gather information quickly and... yeah so you're trying to make sure that you land the shot in such a way that you're not accidentally running it into a car you're keeping aware of what's happening around you perhaps shooting ahead okay i see a gap there i'm gonna take the shot now okay go ahead and roll a four a four a mixed success okay so you're gonna land the shot you see, well, you don't see the bullet because it's traveling so quickly, but the shot fires. There's the loud bang. I mean, the sound of the wind whipping past the open door, though, covers most of the sound. There's a shot, and it goes through the back of his bike, just barely nicking the tire and slams off of it. You hear the thump of what sounds like probably the tire being popped in some way, but he's still moving. It hasn't completely messed up his bike. You, you do see, though, that there starts to be smoke coming off of that back tire as he continues just revving it as hard as he can. And, and very soon, most likely, as soon as that thing deflates completely, um, it is probably going to start sending sparks out from the, the rim slamming across the concrete. Um, kimchi Spice, did you have a plan or are you just, are you just yeah. staying focused and ready? Yeah, I've, I've been focused. I've been focused because I'm kind of seeing this play through. And mm -hmm. right at this moment... I look over at, at my man Gravemaker and I say that I took that bet because I it was meant to encourage you to make that shot. But we're gonna finish this here together, and so I'm gonna take my katana because yeah. you said you see the sp the sparks. I, yeah, I believe yeah. I have a, some, some sort of blade, right? Sure. And I'm observing the situation because now I, we we even though like we're going between vehicles, I'm seeing where the where that rim is sparking up, mm -hmm. and so what I want to do is I want to throw that with forward motion 
mm -hmm. we're going to see if it can hit him in, um, aiming for his his wheel to trip him up so that we can okay. see we can get him sure on the sure here. i'm gonna be i'm gonna be totally honest with you with all the vehicles going by a bullet could very easily penetrate a vehicle worst case scenario a sword however is a different issue in order to overcome that obstacle because if you decide to throw from the position you're currently in it's going to be a really hard shot to make but should you find a way to change your position such as should the muscle Kragor, perhaps throw you from the van into the air that shot would become a lot easier albeit we don't know what would happen when you come down you would definitely I'll have a larger you. chance I'll in you. Trust me. <laughs> yeah. Gregor says, don't worry i'll catch you go ahead Gregor. i'm don't totally worry, down friend, i will catch you yeah okay Gregor. I'll throw and catch you cannot and understand I... me i'm speaking troll please lady tell me <laughs> I completely believe in Craig. Okay. I completely so Craig looks in Craig. over at you, and as he does speaking in troll, he's like, oh, no, 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 so what's going to happen is, Kragor, you're going to choose a, a skill that you feel is appropriate, and then you're going to hurl kimchi spice out of the van into the air. Based on the success of Kragor's throw will affect both positively or negatively kimchi spice's next challenge. As I had said though previously, it will become easier. However, the, the positive or negative will be the part that affects what happens when you start coming down. So the throw well, is going to be a normal throw, no negative. It's the landing part or, or, or falling with style that will become an additional challenge after the throw that depending upon how Kragor does will be, who's to say, we'll see. So go ahead, Kragor and, and roll. And then Kimchi Spice, go ahead and roll your throw for the sword as well. So let so me if I have you... a three in scramble, Okay, uh, five and three. Scramble? Yeah, sure. You're, you're literally like, uh, the, the assumption of scramble is like, think of it like very brutish action. So you're just, yeah. you're grabbing Kim G by the back of the jacket and you're just, <laughs> 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 this is like, open at him, you know, kind of a thing. Yeah. Um, and uh, 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 Indio, you, you would ask a question. What, what's up, bud? Finesse, would that be appropriate? Oh, perfect. Yes, finesse Look would be I a perfect two. skill. Yeah, go okay. ahead and go ahead and roll your finesse throw for that. And would I roll three die if I have a three points in it? Or yes, it yes, you roll all three dice and take the highest, unless you roll two sixes, the and that's a crit. Yeah. Okay. Let's do this together, Kragor. We can. Right, go, go, go. <laughs> that look on India's face. Know first. <laughs> <laughs> you both had interesting faces. I've got What's bad it? news oh. for you. <laughs> Actually, let's hold it. I, I'm a feeling. I'm a feeling it's gonna be great. So let's do let's do the throw first because I want to see oh. how the what's gonna happen after with the fall. So why don't we go ahead? And, uh, what was the throw uh, like, Kimchi Spice? Go ahead. What did you so, roll? Yeah, I rolled a six and a one. Ooh, a full success. Okay, so. Oh. Kimchi Spice, yeah, a six because we take the highest, right? So Kimchi oh. Spice gets hurled into the air flying there's a moment where kimchi is like you could tell they're just being hurled but then you see kimchi's natural poise grace and dexterity taken sort of throws his arms out for a second stopping his momentum and there's a moment where he's almost like flying through the air like thor he takes his sword and just throws it there's this perfect shot. You see it, Kimchi. Your sword is flying through the air. It lands perfectly in the wheel well. There's a tiny bit of a smack as it gets slammed into the back of the bike. The bike halts, now sliding as Smitty loses control and starts sliding through the median lane. The two, uh, the vehicles on both sides are starting to weave out and there's a crazy amount of chaos. So now we have to look at what the throws roll was like. Go ahead. Kragor, what was that roll? Waiting to be caught. Um, <laughs> Waiting to be caught. <laughs> um, I, I may have rolled a, a three. That's your highest dice? Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, uh, so Kimchi Spice. Kragor hurled you with such intensity. It was the perfect amount of hype. 
You weren't quite paying attention to the distance, though, as you realized that Krager threw you out in front of your own moving vehicle. You hurled the throw perfectly, and as you turn to find your landing point, you see the GMC <laughs> Phoenix coming straight <laughs> towards you. What do you do? I roll in the air. Okay. Do a little twist. Uh huh. And grab on the visor. Okay. Am I is, being adept? I have that kind of like potential, or do I? Yeah, yeah. Roll well, well, what powers oh. did you take for your? Uh, what power did you take for your adept power? Because I know there's a few powers that give you superhuman abilities to do stuff. I took the fine astral. Wait, what is it called? Fine. Hmm fine astral weapon so it's supposed to be like am, am i saying that wrong astral like like oh no astral the like the astral, astral it's like yeah. a, like a magical so basically you can summon a magical weapon what did you do for your second power then you know what mm. did you not that, choose one i did or, not choose one how about, about how about then because it's a perfect opportunity to use it why don't we just lock that in right now and uh if i remember correctly let me pull up the name fairly quickly here i believe there is a specific power for, and it's it's your choice to take or not. You don't have to just based on the situation. Oh, um, I'm gonna take it based on the situation. <laughs> yeah. uh, there Oops. is uh, a power called Fragon Adept, and what it says is you can push yourself to do one of the following: perform a feat of acrobatics that verges on superhuman, maneuver to confuse your enemies so they mistakenly attack each other. Um, so in this specific situation, Fragon Adept would make sense. You you literally like like time sort of slows for you as you see the vehicle preparing yourself you know you roll perfectly on the side turning and then grabbing it as though it was you know the, the entire meant to be yeah meant to be exactly um do you want to take that power then there's also a few and other ones too but yeah go ahead i'm penciling that in okay i'm so, worried about what the mess is gonna look <laughs> sure, after that so yeah. fragging <laughs> the death okay so um what you're gonna have to do in order to use this power you're gonna have to spend two of your edge in order to activate it but it does not, it basically increases the effect of your roll. So you're gonna get what's known as either you can add what, plus one dice to your challenge you're about to do, or you can add plus one effect on top of the power that adds plus one effect. So you'll basically, no matter how well you roll in a sense, you'll basically have a superhuman effect on it, meaning that you'll succeed. Um, so that's yeah. that's up to you. So uh, I presumably you're gonna roll a, a finesse challenge roll. So go ahead and roll that finesse, I presume. Yeah? Yep. Oh wait, would you like to add an oh. extra dice to it or do you want to add an extra effect to it? I'm gonna add an extra dice to it. Okay, so go ahead and roll uh, your finesse plus one dice. Plus one dice. So I got a five and a three. Okay. And so now I'm gonna take one of these die and roll again. Yeah, sure, go ahead. Another five. Okay, so a mixed success, but because of your ability, um, you change the effect level from what would have been a weak effect because you're, you have a vehicle coming at you at 90 miles an hour to a standard effect. So even though it's not as perfectly graceful as it was, there's a bit of a bump as you turn and the, your back sort of rolls, taking the momentum and taking the force of the van away from your body. You roll and then turn and are able to grab onto the side, taking no damage um, but it did require you to activate your power to do so. So you are safely now back on the GMC Phoenix. Um, it seems like Smitty has gone down, is now sliding across the ground. Cars are pouring out of his way and there eventually is sort of an opening in the road. Uh, clocks, this would be an opportunity, um, well, not just an opportunity, but this is sort of based on the situation. I'm gonna need one more drive test from you in order to avoid those cars that are now wildly swapping lanes trying to avoid this motorcycle that's coming at them at high speeds. I rolled a six. A six? Perfect. Full success. So you see an open opportunity. You swerve the GMC Phoenix through it, finding that center median lane just past Smitty. You bring the car to a stop, maybe even, you know, giving it that like handbrake turn so the door opens and then Gravemaker standing there with his gun because I see his hand ups and we're about to move right back to Gravemaker. Brave maker, what what do you got for me, buddy? Well, um, just after uh, Kimchi did his stuff, mm -hmm. uh, Grave maker will be like, 
Well, shit. Now I definitely owe him the ten. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so we're we're are we trying to bring this guy in alive or? Uh, he's worth more alive. Okay. Um, I'm gonna... So are you good with the, uh, you know, the handbrake spin, the doors open, Mark, you know, uh, Gravemaker standing there ready for the shot? Are you gonna take a shot? Um, because keep in mind, this is the far future. Perhaps Gravemaker has a different type of ammunition prepared. He's gonna shoot him with a taser round or something like that, taking him out of commission. I was just gonna shoot him the damn leg. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> go for the Terminator approach. He's not dead, you know that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna take aim down the, the scope. Okay. And uh, is he still? He, I imagine he's probably still rolling around on the ground. Well, so he slid. He slid a, a pretty hefty distance. Um, he's now pushing the bike off of himself, and so you have, as he's getting up, in a sense, you have an opportunity to take a shot. Um, okay. If the shot should miss, he might run away, right? He might, like, run across the traffic or something and jump off the side. Who knows, right? Um, and... So I, I, I do have the mod scope, okay. which says incre improves accuracy. Sure. Basically, what that's me... saying is that if, if, if I require you to take, like, a shot and I would normally uh, reduce your effect based on distance or sight, the scope would basically help deal with that negative effect because you can see over a far distance, so. Um, so you guys aren't this... far from him, though, so that's not that's not even a, a fear of yours. Um, so this so while... would be another survey? Sure, yeah, it could be survey, it could be finesse, it could be whatever you think would make the most sense in the fiction. While you're rolling that, I'm going to move over to Krager here. Krager, I see your hand up. What's up, bud? After um, Gravemaker's done taking the shot, uh, whether he succeeds or he fails, I'm going to burst out of the truck and just run him down and try Perfect. to get him to the floor. Okay, we'll move right back to you right after the shot. Okay, Gravemaker, go ahead. Uh, that would be a six. Perfect, full success. No consequence. You take the shot. It lands through the meat of his leg. Um, you're, you're accurate enough. You know generally where to shoot to avoid hitting any major blood vessel so he's not immediately going to bleed out and die. Hitting him in the, the meaty part of the leg in order to prevent him from being able to run too quick. He, he takes the shot. The force of the rifle's shot sort of throws his leg back and he loses his balance, falling to the ground. He starts to like climb up as Krager comes running out of the vehicle towards him. Just this giant troll of a being just... <clears throat> Ooh, ooh, step after step, heading right for Smitty. Craigor, what did you want to do, bud? Uh, I'm going to try, basically, just grab him by the okay. shoulders and just slam him into the floor. I've, okay. I've rolled a, a, a scramble already, and I've got Perfect. five. So Perfect. Mixed success. success. You run up to him. You grab him. Um, there's a moment, you know, his leg is hurt. He's, like, kind of shaking there. You go to slam him, and as you go to slam him, he reaches up a hand, and you see a small little, like, hidden holdout pistol, and he blasts you kind of on the side of the hip. You're going to oh. take a, a, a grazing shot from the... Um, from the, the 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 gun, the Streetline Special, um, which is going to be a a one in your health track. In a sense, you have you have several levels. You have basically two ones, two twos, uh, etc. Up, and then one four until you're dead. And every time you gain a level, if there's not space on that level for it to go, then it upgrades. So a one is not a big deal. Those go away pretty quick, right? Um, so you take a grazing shot as he basically just barely singes the skin giving you that sort of like irritating burn a little bit you know your thick troll hide sloughs off I'm most of it yeah it is more of an anger thing than it is actually affecting you in any way shape or form and you slam him into the ground his name was smitty you will regret that smitty do you say that in troll or do you say that in english I say it in troll. I don't care okay. that he can't understand. I so he just here you go. No, 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 no. He's like, ah, and he's screaming as you're slamming him on the ground. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Blah. So the the rest of the team sees Krager out there, literally like hulking this guy. If you remember from the movie, where he's just like, blap, blap, blap. Clocks. Did you have something? Go ahead. He's worth more if he's alive. 
<laughs> okay. So Krager's like, oh, and then so stops. Okay, perfect. <laughs> so Krager, yeah. oh, oh, Kimchi, go ahead. And then I, I walk up to Krager and just to kind of like distract him. I'm like, Krager, next time throw me with your left arm. <laughs> That's great. Okay. <laughs> okay. So because of the mess of what had happened um you guys need to quickly get out of here after you've grabbed smitty you head back to the van i presume the gmc you hop inside clocks peels it out and off you go on your way back to the fixer that had set you up with the job um to a what's known as a john in a sense john is the sort of colloquial term that's used in the shadows of the of the greater Seattle futuristic world um, to represent the nameless individual that hired you. Generally speaking, you don't know the Johns personally. You don't know much about them, but it's usually a personal connection to a fixer that, that hooks you up with these sorts of jobs. Um, in this case, your fixer's name was Buck, and Buck was the one that had told you about Smitty, hooking you up with the job, setting you up with the John, and so now having come successfully captured smitty you head back to where you had been told by buck that you would meet him and deliver the cargo in a sense you head back to buck delivering smitty you're paid pretty well um all of you receive uh uh three new yen each um think of it like coin from blades right it represents a pretty big sum it's supposed to be a collections of new yen in this game rather than it just being like a you know you get three dollars this is more like you get like thousands of dollars in a sense like a thousand i think it's a a thousand is the currency or uh, the conversion so you guys are all paid you know at for headhunter work it's not great pay but it's still not bad pay um and you did get paid more than you would have gotten if you brought him in dead you would have only been paid about a thousand new yen each so instead you're able to sort of triple your profits so each of you receive uh, you know, 3,000 New Yen, um, or 3 New Yen as the token goes, basically, on your sheet. Um, and the job is completed. As I had said previously, and we are going to talk about that here for a second, um, your crew, as we had talked about earlier, are what are known as radicals to some people that would look at your crew's playbook. Um, for those of you watching out in the audience, what it is is that these group of individuals have chosen to take on sort of a not to say a vigilante role but a sort of radical a sort of revolutionary role and amongst their their perspectives of ethics and where they stand that the one of the largest proponents that they stand against is against the corporate corruption that is negatively affecting not only their areas of seattle that they live in in the, the greater seattle uh, metropolitan area but also the corporate corruption that's affecting the entirety of the place that's affecting the small homes they live in from the bottom to the top and so because of that in your time of working through these things you've met quite a few different individuals as a crew you've met people that have that have uh, taken your side uh, cops beat cops, gangs, uh, interpersonal conflicts, both friend, rival who worked against you, friends who worked with you. Um, and through all of these connections, you made a, a, a group of brothers, um, two brothers, um, by the name of Hugo Meyer and Kevin Meyer. And the Meyer brothers had been working on a software project for a great deal of time. They were visionaries, some people called them, tech geniuses, prodigies beyond anything that they had ever quite seen or known for young men. And as they went through school and they graduated and they started pushing the envelope, they were offered all sorts of wealthy jobs working at AAA corporations, you know, working at, at uh, Seder Krupp, working at Ares, working at um, all the different massive corporations tried to bid for these two um, sort of prodigies but they refused all the offers they decided that their one goal was to use what they were capable of doing um, their their genius when it came to software programming to make some sort of change happen locally regionally whatever the case may be the world of Shadowrun is set far in the future and so because of that the internet, or it's known here as the matrix, is connected to everything. 
It's connected to your phones. It's connected to your coffee makers. It's connected to your refrigerators, to your cars, to your toilets, to everything. And when you put on your VR goggles, or if you have implants that allow you to see into the matrix, you're just plagued by hundreds of ads and spam constantly. As you walk down the road, you see the latest blockbuster videos slammed in massive 3D holographics in front of you. You see, you know, uh, the newest Jurassic Park 17 with a giant T-Rex marching across the road, biting at would-be imaginary cars. It is, it is a massive experience. And so with the Matrix being such a big thing, being part of our global world, being part of our individual lives, they decided that they would do something. They would take away, although there are computer networks or Wi-Fi signals that travel across the vast world, the vast majority of them are controlled by corporations. With only the smallest Wi-Fi signals being controlled locally from businesses or things like that, but even those require some form of monetary payment. They said, with a world that requires everyone to be connected, what better work that can we do than connect everyone together? And so they decided that their goal would be to establish a new Wi-Fi signal that would be free for all to be used. You guys, having heard their beliefs their goals and their dreams have in in over the last several years have done quite a few jobs for the Meyer brothers. And tonight is the night. Tonight is the grand gala at a building, the Myers Tower, a building that is the headquarters of their small single A corporation. Um, and they have invited all the people that they felt were important to the project's success over the years. The four of you were invited, having been sort of secret friends of theirs, helping them in many, many ways. And uh, yeah, uh, Craigor, what's up, bud? Uh, how are trolls uh, kind of visualized in this city? Am I am I a bit of an outcast? Like, how, oh. how am I going to look in a three-piece suit, you know? Okay, well, I mean, that's a great question. So let's talk a little bit about that here. Um, so, well, you know, it's it's all based on who you know, right? As in our real world, networking is important. Um, albeit that there is a sort of, uh, uh, what's known as metahuman connotation, uh, metahuman in the Shadowrun world is a sort of slur, but it's also a term that people use for anyone that is not the normal human. For those of you that may not know, Shadowrun is a world that's set far in the future where magic has somehow returned to the world. There's a great depth of lore, and if you're interested in it, I would say definitely check it out. But for tonight, we're only going to really touch on the topics that are important to our characters. And so with that, um, for, for the aspect of trolls, yes, trolls are considered in a way to be brutes. They're considered to be, in a sense, outcasts. They're thought of to be thuggish, to be stupid, to be, um, you know, uh, <laughs> it's funny oh, it is. I'm not really this breaking the ball, am I? <laughs> yeah. Craigor, Craigor, as you've seen so far, Craigor is uh, perhaps not, you know, any sort of outlying datum in that way. And that's not a problem. Um, but there are, and Craigor would have known about them, there are trolls who are, you know, teachers, professors, scientists, uh, you know, uh, corporate owners and uh, things like that. But as a as a sort of metahuman uh, race, I guess would be the term, um, they are sort of treated as thugs because they have a natural strength and resiliency. And so because of that, they're very well suited for uh, bodyguard work um, and uh, security work and police work and, you know, think labor forces, labor, uh, things like yeah. that, right? So... Um, so for the gala, would we be wearing suits? You you could be, yes. You you were invited, and 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 the Myers uh, brothers, uh, you know, sort of in private, sent you some Nuyen on the side and said, hey, you know, you know, anytime we've talked or whatever, like, you you guys uh, may not have been, you know, dressed the nines or whatever. I mean, you, some of you looked great, but uh, if you need, you know, here's a little here's a little corporate uh, money on the side. Buy yourselves, you know, so, some nice uh, suits, etc. No, no corporate money. I refuse. <laughs> I'm sure. a radical. What are you doing? <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Well, you have to keep in mind every business is known as a corporation. There's yeah, just, yeah, you know, yeah. varying <laughs> levels, right? A, a, a single A corporation is what would be what we would consider to be more of like a local business or the closest thing to it, other than like 
unlicensed mom and pop shops, mm -hmm. right? Right. It's a little bit bigger than a normal mom and pop shop. Um, that sort of thing, right? Sorry, Craig all gets confused easily. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Okay. So it helps Craig or pick out a yeah. outfit. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Nice. Okay, so like I was saying, tonight is the night of the of the launch event. Tonight is the night where their their final version debugged and and uh, produced and finally at its stage to go live. Tonight is that night. And they've invited everyone for a gala in which they will count down to its launch and then its signal will go live um, as far as the towers will send it um, for a time and with plans in the future to basically have the signal that sends out you know, more towers and more places and things like that because their eventual dream is to have a free global Wi-Fi network that is actually good and secure and allows for free access to everyone. Um, and so because of this, as I said, being radicals especially, you had, uh, you know, that this sort of resonated with you. I mean, although it may not be stopping the corruption, it's still along the ideas of helping the layman, you know, helping people get connected, giving, empowering them to take their lives back. And so for those of you that may be more extreme, you may have seen it that way. However, each of your characters may have, in a sense, negotiated with the ethics of working with the Myers brothers. That's up to you to determine. You don't necessarily have to think of them like the best buddies in your life or something like that. But for those of you um, that wish to, you're welcome to. They, they, they treat you in a, in a sort of friendship acquaintance level mostly. But if you feel that perhaps the Myers brothers may not be your best buds in the world, um, that's completely up to each of you individually. So, um, with that though, having completed the job that you decided to finish last minute, because why not get a few extra new yen in, in, on the data cred or sorry, on your, your data stick and, uh, you know, head to the gala with the, uh, suits that you had been provided with suits, dresses, whatever you choose to wear each of you. And, uh, yeah. Go wear a dress. Perfect. No. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, Craig is a big Craig. person, so I could I could see yeah. Craig yeah. wearing something. It makes something. sense. A three piece yeah. suit wouldn't work. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I need I need breeze. Yes. It's hot. On the lower <laughs> regions, you know those sorts of things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I I am gonna say that there is a momentary reprieve here for a second uh, before you guys head to the gala. Um, you would have been told by the Myers brothers that it is a you know dress nice leave your guns at the door sort of thing you know the nicest way to say don't bring your giant rifles because you'll be asked to leave them outside sort of a thing um so that's up to determine like it's up to each of you individually to determine what sort of gear your character decides to bring um and how you might stash it on yourselves if you're trying to do so um, amongst the suits that you're wearing but uh yeah, this would be that opportunity that we're going to have a discussion about how your character might be dressed and and, and ready to go to the the event. Um, to, to the best of your ability, you were told there's going to be private security. Um, you know, you've been to the Myers Tower before, and it is it is in it is a state of the art building that was built in like the last five years. Um, you know, with full. Uh, just state of the art fire equipment, uh, security breach equipment. You know, terrorism things. You know, it has the works so it is presumably a relatively safe place to go to an event at um albeit some of you may not be comfortable without your weapons you know uh what was the name of your weapon gravemaker again uh popeye popeye i you know you can't go without popeye or sheila my side weapon or whatever you call it i don't know uh i actually speaking of i was not aware that the military weapon special item actually counted as two special items apparently oh yeah so, so some of the special items will count as multiple items right so i'm gonna have to drop the scope oh that's fine because yeah, no i have uh, my other is a fine pair of colt pistols and they're named betty and boop oh that's good i like that i like that that's very good okay uh did i see anybody else's hand was that indio did i see your hand raised there Oh, okay, just checking in. Just checking in. No problem. Anybody else have anything? Um, uh, as we are going to talk about the preparations for the party and the gala, feel free to sort of think about those things and and what you'd like to do there. Is there anything from anyone specifically? Hmm. Is there repercussions if I? Because you know my character is always you know hmm a little you know thinking that everyone's suspect, and mm -hmm. I know 
I know my my finely tailored tuxedo is going to have some form of Kevlar in it. Oh sure, but, yeah. Uh, but is is there is there any repercussions if I had you know little smokes? my blades somewhere you know what i mean in there oh no that's what um, i'm saying like you could totally stash these these smaller okay. weapons you know hidden yeah. away so that okay. no one would even know at least for okay. at least it seems you might be, be able to get away with it um they might have added new security things so perhaps um give that a shot yeah you can give that a shot though yeah for sure okay vince i see your hand up what's up bud so since since one of my um traits for my military weapon is light mm-hmm would it, like i i am i picture it as a breakdown sniper. oh yeah right? sure yeah it, it takes up less space it's easier to transport right. yeah i presume what, that you know you could maybe get away with like hiding it in a briefcase or something making it look yeah. like it's sort of like a i'm a businessman in my business suit oh don't mind me in my handbag oh you know, right. like that sort of thing right okay sure yeah <laughs> okay um as i talked about uh hold on i need to pause for a second Oh, did you have something? Go ahead. I just wanted to say that despite the fact that uh, Clocks is wearing a suit, she also has a divinely humongous handbag. Oh, okay. Okay. Very nice. Very nice. Divinely humongous. I'm thinking like presumably like some sort of magic, like Mary Poppins or something like that. <laughs> no, just a, just one of those handbags that you see that are just like how does she carry that on her shoulder and it's like with grace <laughs> oh i see okay perfect mm. our crew um who uh have spent some time gathering their things uh putting on their their different adornments for the evening and uh, we're just going to check in very quickly with them to see if there was any last minute things about what they were doing. We had heard from Kimchi Spice, Indio, um, that they were going to be wearing their nice three-piece tuxedo and uh, a three-button, pardon me, and uh, that they had stowed away blades on themselves, small knives, presumably throwing knives, hand knives, whatever the case may be. Um, we had heard from Gravemaker that he was going to try and stow away in in portions his uh rifle in a uh, sort of a briefcase of sorts in order to be able to perhaps get that inside um do we need to uh check we'll check in with clocks and then we'll check in with craker oh did you have something more grave maker is there something i missed go ahead well we're doing uh we're, we're setting up our loadouts right now correct or are we just figuring what we're trying to hustle and smuggle in? this is just mostly flavor right it's, okay. think of it like this so in the way that that runners in the shadow works is you don't actually need to choose your loadout right now in mark boxes you only need to mark boxes when you need the tool for the job um so okay. as it stands this is more just flavor to provide yourselves with the opportunity to be able to call on this gear later on should you need it like for example if kimchi spice said well no i just go in and i'm just wearing my clothes but then later says wait but i need my blade even if he hadn't said it now, in the future, all he has to do is check that box and we can say, oh, of course, you stowed away one of your trusty blades in your sock, you know, whatever the case may be. So you don't have to determine all of these things now. I was just generally going for like sort of role play flavor about the way that your character might, uh, you know, set themselves up or what they might do as, as sort of a, you know, in order to stay comfortable in their suit or dress or whatever the case may be. So yeah, so as I said, well, let's move to clocks. Clocks, do you have any sort of preparations like that you're planning for? Yeah, um, I was going to bring some of my more important hacker things because you never know when something goes down and might be fixed and we all know I'm probably the best at it, so. Okay, so you're, you're gonna bring what, what's known as a compad. Think of it like a ultra smartphone. It's like a tablet of the future. It's your phone, it's your everything, it's your personal computer all in one. And it's about tablet size and shape and has the, the raw computing power that we have with our like $4,000 computers in this day and age. So it's a beast of a machine. But in order to do your appropriate hacking bits, you have what's known as a deck, which is basically something that you hook into in order to sort of pirate a signal into the internet or what it's known as in Shadowrun as the Matrix. Um, so you would, you presumably are bringing your deck along and of course your compat uh, along so that you, should you need to, you can, uh, you know, do your sort of uh, skills of trade as it would be. Um, perfect. Okay. So Craigor, did you have anything that you were bringing along? 
Uh, I would definitely have my uh, suit be padded, similar to Last Indio with the, okay. the camera. But I think mine would be like more of a under under suit, so not sure. actually built in itself, but like a a padding. Yeah, um, sure. And that's what I'd need. Can't okay. disarm me. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's unless they rip your arms off or something. Yeah, totally. I've got two of them right here. Yeah, the door, son. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Okay, so um, our crew has prepared. They hop into their vehicle, um, heading to the the Myers Tower. It's set in close to the downtown area, although not be it in the in the corporate center where the largest corporations have their mega. Um, you know, giant buildings and neighborhood city size, miniature city size, sort of uh, headquarters and businesses and things like that. It's set off to sort of the edge of that, but it's still within the fineries of the downtown area, as it would be. Um, they arrive at the mayor's tower, parking their vehicle, heading to the entryway. Um, as they arrive, they see that there are, uh, you know, security guards, as they've seen before. Um, and there are, you know, sweepers and things like that. I'm going to presume that because of your preparations and things, um, that it, it'll be very hard for them to catch your weapons, as it would be. Perhaps you stash them in a place where, you know, like in the case of Kimchi Spice, you know, they put the paddle over you and you're like, you know, metal hip, you know, that sort of thing. And they're like, oh, yeah, of course, right. And you pass right along. Like sharp socks. Say that again. <laughs> Uh, I would say sharp socks. I'm wearing some sharp socks. Like <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> or something like that, yeah. So you're able to pass by security. They don't give you much grief or anything like that. Worst case, even if they did, you you know, you know, say what your names are on the guest list, and it says that you guys were given sort of special privileges, in a sense, um, that they would allow you because you're trusted. Um, you're, you're written in, apparently, as some sort of private security should it be needed on standby or something of that variety. Um, you know, just to... Because the Myers have learned who you are and the majority of you including kimchi and gravemaker etc are most comfortable when you have your weapons with you um you know you wouldn't really go anywhere without them so it makes sense that the myers having sort of understood that about you if they wanted you to show up they would have to accept the fact that you're gonna have a few weapons on you um in order for you to be there but they would rather have people they trust with those weapons than have random people so um, so you arrive, you pass through security, you head into the elevators. The, the building is a large, beautiful, uh, metallic sort of colored building. It has this sheen to its outer side. It is, it is not perfectly polished because if it was perfectly polished, you know, the reflection from the sun would just make it blinding to the nearby neighborhood. Think of it like sort of a frosted metallic sheen to it, to where it, it softly glows with light and it softly glows with the, with the moonlight of sorts. Um, it, there, it's heavily set by reinforced glass throughout the entire uh, building. It has 20 plus floors, probably even 30 plus floors. It is a massive tower. Um, and you know that the Myers uh, generally do most of their business here. They, they even have uh, one of the levels set up towards the top as sort of a suite. Um, even though it's not like a hotel suite, but they've set it up that way because they spend so much time in the building doing business that it made sense for them to both have sort of living arrangements um, set up. Um, however, the party is not being held in said suite. It's being held one floor down where there's this sort of a business ballroom sort of space. Um, you all head into the elevator, you know, as I said, past the security inside the elevator, up, 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 up the floors until you eventually arrive in the ballroom. The room opens to a mass of people in suits and dressed, uh, dresses tangled in conversations, um, laughing and drinking and having a good time. The room itself has a beautiful pond set to one side with a, f a waterfall flowing gently into it. It has a, a staircase off to the other that leads up to some very modern uh, sort of uh, modern deco style architecture stairs that lead up to what you presume to be some of the private offices of the higher level executives and things of that variety. Um, generally though, there are sort of uh, a, a network of uh, hallways and corridors that pour off of this main thoroughfare where it seems the vast majority of the party is that you presume leads to other offices and spaces and places. Um, there are caterers, with food trays and there are caterers walking around handing out appetizers and things of that variety of course you all are able to eat to your fill to drink to your fill should you wish to 
um, and people don't really recognize you for the most case. Um, however, though, the vast majority of you see a few different people you recognize. Um, to Olivia, or Clocks, you recognize your friend Lynx, um, or at least the Matrix avatar of them is, is being sent in via uh, sort of a 3D hologram uh you know, uh, it's a common thing in this world that people can, you know, meet in cyberspace or send sort of holograms of themselves um, from basically like, uh, imagine projectors that shoot down. Um, and so it's a common thing for people to be able to go to clubs and stuff. And instead of actually physically being there, they project themselves there and they're able to engage still through the comm system and things like that, but they're not physically there. But you see the sort of avatar space of your friend Lynx, um, the forum admin. It is a it is what looks like probably a postal worker of some variety, um, holding a piece of mail in their hand and just sort of dancing like very interestingly and strangely. Um, their, their facial features are not quite there. They have this sort of like Slenderman sort of thing where it's like featureless, but there's this blue glow to it. So it's less eerie because people sort of set it off as like, oh, it's just a me matrix avatar you know no big deal but otherwise it's it's normally sort of human looking it's wearing a, a fine suit it's holding a piece of mail as though it's like some sort of cigar or something and and sometimes the the avatar will change from the piece of mail to being a cigar or being a, a glass flute or something like that you know to where it's drinking from it or enjoying itself and the avatar is engaging in conversation with different people um, mostly though, you see individuals that probably look like programmers themselves, you know, they're dressed nice, but you can tell they're a little bit more uncomfortable here. Um, Craigor sees, uh, his friend Dex here, um, who doesn't generally interact with these sorts of people, but, um, Craigor is sort of surprised by it. Um, Dex is here, his street talk contact. Um, perhaps he knows the Myers brothers or perhaps through you somehow he met the Myers brothers. You can tell he's wearing basically the, the most basic form of a suit. It's basically jeans, a white shirt, and a black blazer. Um, and he's wearing like cowboy boots, uh, underneath his, uh, blue jeans. And he's sort of sitting there with his feet rested up on a table, uh, you know, off to one side. People are sort of giving him a, a wide amount of space. Um, and he just sort of like nods to people and stuff like that. He sees you from across the room and he's just like, Hey, Krager, how you doing? I, uh, I find the nearest person with like the tray of drinks. And sure. I just like snatch two from it. Oh, sure. Yes. Over to Dex so you have like, two, like double fisting. Yeah, yeah. sure. Okay. I take, yeah. I take two and I, I hand him one and I, I, I sit down. I, I want to pre preface. Does he does he speak troll? I imagine he would if we know what. It seems like he understands troll pretty well. Yeah, it's uh, one of those things where like he generally talks in English, but he seems to understand yeah. you. Yeah. Okay. Well, I I, I, I ask how he is. Oh, I'm doing good, partner. I'm doing great, man. Hey, you know I know the Myers brothers. You know they were in, they were having a hard time. And, uh, you know, uh, you know, they had this, they had this, uh, security guard, you know, it had a hard time and, uh, you know, I passed him up good and, uh, you know, they, you know, we, we kept in contact, you know, I helped them out when they came, when they need it. And, uh, you know, I mean, they invented, why wouldn't they invite me to a fancy party? <laughs> we trying to say, Krager? Uh, we trying to say? Uh, nothing. <laughs> I don't mean anything by it, Dex. Me and you are, are good friends. Yeah. yeah, I know. I'm just giving you a hard time, big guy. He says, and he, like, smacks you over the shoulder, you know? <laughs> um, <laughs> he uh, he grabs one of the glasses from you and starts drinking a little bit, too. Uh, kimchi Spice, huh? you you see your friend... Uh, what, what was the name? Um, Flex? Is, the, is Flex the bad one? Vane. No. Vane and Flex. Oh, for no, hold up. For kimchi spice, uh, oh. you what, what was your friend's name? Bike the Spike. dojo owner. Yeah, that's what it was. Okay, Ooh. sorry, I almost wrote it wrongly, and then I looked at it, and I was just like, I don't think that's right. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I I I wrote it wrong. I yeah. So anyway, so Spike, you see, uh, your friend Spike is here. 
Um, he's been invited. He's one of the local business owners. You know, he's he's been behind the idea of getting free um, internet, you know, being sort of, not to say just a pillar of the community, but uh, not in the downtown area, but in sort of the local outlying neighborhoods and things like that. He's sort of a, a pillar of those communities. He's always trying to, you know, help the down and out kids, things like that. Um, yes. So uh, as I was saying, Spike a dojo owner, a pillar of the community. You see him here. He's uh, he's dressed pretty nice, um, you know, engaging in the normal sort of uh, uh, societal necessities of, of dressing to match and fit in. Um, he's having a few conversations. Um, he doesn't quite notice you at first, but um, you do see him, uh, Kimchi. And then, of course, uh, Gravemaker, your friend Vane is here. However, your friend Vane is not interacting with anybody. Your friend Vane is standing over by one of the catering tables and is uh, just sort of like, eating and like seems like unimpressed by everything just go to like <laughs> like just like not not having it like obviously like maybe strong-armed into coming here or, or something like that yeah did you have something go ahead um i will i will only make brief eye contact with them uh -huh. as like uh acknowledgement and then keep moving sure They just uh, they just sort of nod to you too, and then like they hold up a, a like one like one of the appetizers or something they're eating, and they just look at you and they're just like, and then they eat it again, you know, kind of like they're disgusted by it or something. But you you're not sure why they like almost almost in that way of like non verbally communicating like this is terrible. I don't know why I'm eating it, you know that sort of thing. Um, and so you see sort of these friends. Um, the thing that you do notice very quickly though is that there are a number of people here that are not your friends. Um, it seems that there's a, a huge group of people um, from all different places, from the, from the, the neighborhoods, from the um, you know, communities. Um, there's this sort of hodgepodge of people as though not only were friends and people who helped the company um, were they invited, but members of the community in different ways and connections and things like that. And amongst their faces, you guys see um, clocks. You see another sort of uh, uh, 3D hologram of a person uh, who seems to be sitting at a counter or something, and they're sitting in a chair, and you recognize them as uh, your not-so-friendly friend, uh, Baxter. Um, they're standing in a back behind Baxter. the mass of people. And they're, they're there, present, obviously because they own some sort of business nearby, and so they're a part of the community in some way, um, albeit, you know, probably not to your uh, happiness, as it would be, but they are present. Um, Craigor, uh, outside when you came in, you didn't quite click in your head at the time, but outside when you came in, you saw um, a, a vehicle and, and some bikes with the, the symbol of the gang that uh, one of your sort of rivals, I guess you could say, is a part of. Um, they're known as the uh, the Street Ox, which are basically a, a group of stubborn trolls that have been trying to get you to join their number for some time. Um, mm. and, and of course they have your, your rival, as, as we have said, um, your rival amongst uh -huh. their number. Uh, or at least they're connected, in a sense, to... They are connected to Lefty, who is also sort of a troll ganger who's been trying to rope you in for some time. But you're like, nah, I don't, you know, you're not you're not about that life, right? Um, but it's well, been... If I, if I see him... If yeah, I right see now him, you I'm don't see him, him, but it, it definitely could be one of those when you do see him, it might be one of those you might exchange words or fists or who knows, right? Uh -huh. um, Both. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, Kimchi Spice, you do see Roz. Professor Roz, okay. Yeah, from one of the local universities. Um, you see members of other members of the same university having, uh, you know, come and, and been in attendance. I mean, this is this is sort of a tech, uh, technological marvel uh, in a sense. This is something that's groundbreaking. And so, as I said, there are just packed, the room is packed with people. And so, you know, seeing these faces makes sense, especially with such a momentous occasion. Um, but it still doesn't sit right with you. Definitely not. Not at all. Gravemaker, you see Flex 
And it seems to be that he's in some sort of a professional role this evening. He seems to be performing some sort of body work for one of the executives. Um, he's standing nearby. You could tell them the person's an executive. They're sort of schmoozing with the other, uh, you know, high rollers in a sense, wearing really nice suit, talking to other people. You see the mayor's brothers off in the distance. You presume that it's probably other execs they're talking to. And you see Flex is working body work, bodyguard work, basically, for the night, presumably, for one of these executives. Um, he makes eye contact with you. And then, and then breaks eye contact and just sort of continues scanning the crowd, um, not really giving you any mind. But there's there's definitely a sense of, you know, kind of like, fuck you. If there was a way to say fuck you without saying it, it was definitely the look he just gave you. Um, and so you sort of bring it, those moments, you know, to sort of the forefront. Um, you see these people, the, 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 the good and the bad. And... As the time sort of shifts on, you're welcome to interact with those different people. Did any of you want to have specific interactions with any of those people before we sort of move on to the sort of... Because uh... you can tell that the Myers brothers seem to be starting to gather people's attention, like they're trying to eventually do some sort of speech or something. But you have some time in the meantime. Anybody? Oh, can, uh, Indigo? Or, sorry, sorry about that. Indio? I said that completely wrong. For sure, uh, for sure. <laughs> Indio, my apologies. Please. Yeah, that's another AK, you know, name Indigo. I'll, Indigo, I'll go I like it. Yeah. Uh, no. um, so I'm gonna, um, I, I think I'm gonna say, uh, Grave Makers next to me, and I'm gonna tap him on the shoulder and say, Hey, um, while, uh, while, um, Kragor is talking to his Garth Brooks looking buddy, I'm gonna go uh, <laughs> chat, chat with, uh, with a with a friend of mine I just caught, caught eyes with, right? And so I, I walk over and um, I uh, kind of embrace my friend Spike. And to say, you know, I go, Spike, to think that many years ago, because of you, you know, in your dojo, I can say I'm here today. And now we're here seeing this momentous moment together. It's just in knowing that you're one of those few pillars that are helping keep local businesses local and keeping a, a stronghold while the larger corporations do what they do. And for you to be part of this. I'm I'm happy to be part of this as well. He, uh, you know, just have that, he, that kind of exchange. Yeah, yeah. You can see that when you say that to him, the, the, it, it seems like he's moments away from just the tears sort of falling down his face. And he he puts a hand on your shoulder and he's just like, you know, even though you may you know say it was my actions, you have to remember. Uh, does he? What, what does he refer you as? Um, what would be yeah. like the sort of name you would share? Because he is sort of like a, a mentor in a sense to you, right? An, he, an calls he calls me yeah. Chi. Okay. He, so he calls you Chi? Okay. He holds his hand. He's like, yeah. you know what? He's like, Chi, I'm so glad you're here. Um, and I really appreciate that. Thank you so much for the compliment. But I have to say, you know, your journey, Chi, is your journey. And without you putting in the work, you, you know, you wouldn't be where you are. So even though you might want to thank me and thank yourself, sure, I do things that I can. But let's, I agree with you. Let's celebrate this night. Drinks, he says, you know, and then he like brings over some champagne and like passes you some and you guys like cheers together and you, you, you swig a few back, you know, you're laughing and have a good time. Uh, the mayor's, uh, uh, Hugo of the mayor's brothers, uh, the one that I, I'm going to say of the two mayor's brothers that you guys have a, a, a more working relationship with, like it, it's not working, sorry, more of a friendly relationship with it. It's with Hugo, whereas the the other brother, uh, Kevin, has been more of a professional relationship, right? He's, he doesn't seem to get personally involved, whereas with Hugo specifically of the mayor's brothers, he's always the one that's like, hey, how are you? How's your life? How you living? You know, he's always like checking in with you guys when he sees you or when you like help him with a job or like help him run down a lead or a problem, especially you clocks, because a lot of times, you know, you've been that sort of like off the books programmer that he's like hey i don't really know how to do this and i don't know if this is strictly legal but could you look into this thing for me you know and so you guys have that sort of friendly relationship so in that moment where you guys are celebrating uh chi and and sort of your your older mentor um uh by the name of spike uh, uh hugo mayors looks over at you guys and sort of raises a glass to both of you and, and you raise a glass back to him you know um does anybody else have any any moments or anything they'd like to have sort of before the you can tell the mayor's brothers are starting to like as i said gather people's attention anybody else um 
Yeah, I will actually approach Vane. Okay. Uh, as as casually and like nonchalant of like uh, and you're like grabbing uh, food at the table, mingling with yeah. a stranger, sure. right? And just be like, "Oh, well, what brought you here?" And um, you know, what 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 brought you here this evening? And uh, kind of see if if they'll be able to give me some kind of because they don't they, they highly unlikely they're going to want to like say too much information mm -hmm. but to see what i can glean from what they say mm -hmm. okay so um i'm going to use a sort of a storytelling method here um in order to uh cut some of the paraphrasing that might be required for this sort of interaction so we're just going to establish right now that you guys are having a veiled conversation. To what other people that they might hear, they hear these sort of subtle phrases of, oh, how's the weather? How'd you like the hors d'oeuvre? Oh yes, uh, the the indigo in the, the blue beverage is quite nice. There's all these little things you're saying as though you've never really met and you're just sort of exchanging pleasantries, but hidden inside that conversation is a sort of myriad web of, of hidden underlying meanings, a code of sorts that you and Vane and others who work in information networking and things like that tend to use. And so hidden in these sort of codes and phrases, you're able to exchange information. With Vane, you end up uh, sort of asking, you're basically like, I'm that, that sort of idea of you're surprised that they're here, I presume, right? They respond to you that um, they're surprised that they're here too conversation goes on and as you had said you're sort of trying to figure out what they're about and what's going on is there something up and as time goes on through this the, these sort of subtle phrases and these little hints and things vain without putting it in specific words because through the way you're speaking it's hard to sort of nudges at the fact that they think something is about to happen something perhaps very bad um they're not sure when but it's going to be soon. And after your conversation, you're exchanging of pleasantries. As one of the waiters goes walking by, they grab the entire tray from the person's hand, say, get another, and then go walking off, eating the hors d'oeuvres off of the very platter itself and, and sort of walk off to a back corridor of sorts. Was there anything else you wanted to say to them just to make sure? I, I don't want to just cut you off and say you couldn't say more. Was that was that sort of what you were looking for? Yeah, that was. I was just trying to, uh, you know, Gravemaker was just trying to glean a little bit of like why somebody with their expertise mm -hmm. and their field would be here in this yeah. moment, sort of thing. So mm -hmm. yeah, and I don't want to. I don't want to, you know get too into it just in case somebody would be able to yeah decipher you can't be specific yeah yeah so that's why you got this sort of vague notion that something's going to happen there's this there's this uneasy sense to vein like they're not sure what it is but they don't want to be here for it and they go walking off into a back room uh into a back corridor etc anybody else have any sort of things before we get going clocks go ahead oh just a, i wanted to talk to link Links okay. just to talk shit about Baxter. Oh, That's sure, it. yeah. So you walk into the <laughs> middle, and there's this sort of uh, area where music's playing and people are dancing, and Links is just sort of just jamming, you know, just just getting, just vibing, just having a good time. And you walk up, and they're like, Clocks, it's great to see you! And then they give you a digital hug, you know, where they're just like, they act, they, there's no physical contact, but they're just like, uh, you know, like that sort of thing. Um, or maybe, you know, it's like Demolition Man, you do the sort of hand movement or whatever like greetings and salutations you know that sort of thing uh whatever it might be um you you engage um you start dancing you start having a good time you know you you have a drink they have a you know sort of avatar version of a drink and you guys definitely start talking shit about baxter you're like that fucking shit bag what is he doing here how dare he that's this charlatan. is that charlatan's what Lynx is saying like did you see his reddit thread that guy Downvote, 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 downvote. You know, I'm gonna blast him on Twitter right now. I'm gonna blast him. Let's just blast them together. You know, like there's this just sort of like you're just, just shit talking, them, dude. And whatever it is your your characters may have done, just to say f that guy. 
you yeah. maybe you post on a specific thor a forum thread with a video of you guys having a good time and then a picture of baxter's avatar standing in the back corner just like you know like unhappy like that sort of thing you're just like what you should be like at a party what baxter's like at a party right that sort of thing you know just drawing shade absolute shade on the person um yeah I so you have a good oh was there something else thought i heard somebody Okay. That was me saying, damn. Damn, right? <laughs> this, is a, this is a special holiday episode. You know, we got to keep it, keep it very, keep it very colorful language, it seems. Yeah, I'm mm. sorry. Anyways, so. <laughs> anyways, so, as I had said, uh, they, they start to gather everyone's attention. The mayor's brothers t step up the stairs and they're like, you know, they're dinging their glasses and giving everyone's attention. And at first, Kevin speaks and he's like, Thank you all so much for being here. We're very glad to have you here. You know, it's been a long time and uh, Sentinel Software Systems has been working our asses off to make this happen. And uh, thank you all for all your hard work. I'm gonna pass it over to my brother though, cause he's got a few things he wants to say. And uh, you know, I feel like that's gonna reflect what I have to say as well. And so Kevin passes it off to Hugo. Hugo, you know, stands up to another cheer of the sort of crowd. And he's just like, we are so happy to be here. We are so excited for this moment. We have been dreaming about this for years. And now is the time, friends. In one short hour, we are gonna go live to the area, to the region. And that's why you are all here. You are all gonna benefit from this. And then eventually, as we've said over the next six months, our rollout program, we're going to be putting up more and more and more towers until we eventually cover the world. You know, like everybody cheers at that, like, ah, right? There's claps and applause and just everyone's very excited. And we just want to thank you all for being here. <laughs> Krager. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We just want to thank you all for just being here with us for this moment. We want to thank the whole team. We want to thank each and every one of you in your own way. You have helped us accomplish our dreams. And so we hope that when our project goes live, we're going to help improve the communities you're all a part of. Thank you so much for your time. I don't want to talk for too long here, but I hope you all have a wonderful night in, you know, about 45 50 minutes we're gonna get back up here and then we're gonna prepare for a sort of countdown. We're gonna get that going. I hope you're all excited. Enjoy the party. And then he like holds up a glass and he's like, yeah, you know, he cheers and everybody like holds up a glass, sort of a cheers. And, and there's, there's an excitement in the room and the, the Myers brothers are talking to each other for a second. And then, um, a, a few other executives walk up the stairs in that moment and they're, they're shaking hands and working their way down to the crowd. And then eventually they come over to different people and they're shaking hands and you know, thanking people and doing all these sorts of things, this sort of uh, hand grabbing in a sense, you know, very much like political, very much, you know, friendly, very like, and, and that and that goes on for 10, 15 minutes until they've eventually gotten around to most of the room. It's hard, like with hundreds of people, it's hard to shake everybody's hand, but, you know, they take the time to make sure that they're like, oh, hello, how are you? You know, anybody that comes up to them. Um, and that goes on, like I said, for 15, 20 minutes, that sort of thing. You guys enjoy the food, you enjoy the drinks, time moves on. And as th this sort of energy is building in the room, as the clock is ticking 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, 50 minutes pass, and it's building, and you see the brothers look like they're starting to sort of gather each other and prepare the team, and there's these sort of energy and conversations going on like it, we're almost there, we're almost there. In that moment, an unknown person walks out of a back hallway, stands before everyone, and fires a gun into the air. A fully automatic machine gun just... The security guards immediately freak out, drawing their weapons going to fire. And from the nearby corridors, other armed and armored individuals in this strange black armor you've never seen 
holding weapons that look far beyond what is allowed or sold on the streets. They come charging out of these corridors, ambushing the room, telling the security guards to get down, get down, right? Some of them go to draw their weapons and fire on the security guards. A rash of gunfire starts to spread through the room. What are the four of you doing? At this point, you're all separated. The crowd surrounds you almost everywhere, except for those of you that sit on the far edges of the room, perhaps Gravemaker. But getting a clear shot to any more than one or two of these individuals is rather hard. With the chaos of what's unfolding, you all realize that if you are to engage them, you would have to engage them now or perhaps not engage them at all. What is your choice? Let's Gregor check in with you. Gregor flinch. doesn't even flinch. Gregor he just stands there. He just, he just sits there and keeps drinking with dicks. Okay. I'm going to wait for them to come to me. Sure, yeah. Anybody else? Clocks, why don't we check in with you? What are, what are you doing? Well, considering I'm not wearing armor, I'm probably scanning the room for who is the closest person of my crew that is mm -hmm. near me. We'll say, uh, you know, you were dancing in the dance area, so you're sort of like center of the room in a sense. So we'll say uh, Kimchi is nearby. He was hanging out with Spike. Gravemaker's on the far side over near the sort of uh, uh, the catering tables and things like that. And then Gregor is sitting off behind you uh, on the other side of the waterfall near an open, like large, beautiful glass windows that kind of overlook the city and overlook the downtown area. And he's sitting there with his buddy um, and they were popping, you know, glasses back and things like that. So <laughs> you're sort of in the middle of everything. So there's not really like a one is closer um other than kimchi who would probably actually be the closest um you're almost equal distance to most of the crew in a sense so so i'd probably duck cover and like scuttle over to kimchi <laughs> okay so you're like moving between people's legs and getting low everyone's sort of there's just a Toast chaos calling. of movement okay totally um kimchi let's let's check in with you what what is your plan so uh i say the obvious to to my my mentor um spike i'm like i'm like mentor drop to the ground you know mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. right after that i'm looking for craigor that's the only name i'm thinking of craigor because you know the the, the biggest member of our team you know mm -hmm. and um i know that i had just walked away previously from um grave maker and um I, Depending on my character, I mean, I'm not sure if it matters uh, where if if um, clock is already close to me mm -hmm. or based on my action, would she see like, oh, he's moving that way? Because I don't since I don't have that information, I don't know if I saw her and made eye contact and was like with eyes like, hey, Craig or <laughs> because sure. I, yeah, my, my gut is like better in numbers. You know sure, what I mean? Yeah, and yeah. and Craig is I don't know what's in the drink. But he is way too calm for me right now. And I want to see, like, maybe he's from his perspective, something is different. So we, sure, I need to yeah. make my way over there. Yeah, you could have totally, you could have totally given a, giving a knowing nod to Clocks. Yeah, is Clocks okay with that? So perhaps Clocks saw that knowing nod, gave you the, the motion. Your mentor is like, no, don't fight them. Don't do anything. They have guns. You know, he's like trying to stop you from what he thinks is making a stupid decision or something like that. But you're like, no, no, I got this. I got, you know, that sort of thing. Clocks is crawling through the crowd, heading towards you. Uh, Gravemaker, what, what was your what was your plan? What was your sort of situation? Well, did I notice, uh, do I notice that they're starting to try and group up with Craigor? Yeah, you can notice that there's this sort of knowing look amongst the group. They're all, you are all looking, they were all looking for each other. They're sort of like, oh, I, you know, that sort of thing. And then you see Kim Chi start moving towards uh, uh, Craigor, and then you see clocks sort of like get down on there and you can kind of see them crawling between the chaos of people towards Craigor off to the one, the far side. Yeah. You could sort of, by the way, if you wanted to move, even though people are rushing past, but the armed, armored individuals, which by the way, to describe very quickly, it's like full body armor um, that seems form-fitting, but still thick. Um, it is 
It has this strange, like, dull hue to it of black. Um, the, the There are helmets that are form-fitting all the way across their faces and down that have this sort of strange visor that comes over their faces that's connected all the way down with what you what looks like sort of like a rebreather. So perhaps it'd be hard to, like, poison them or something. Think of, like, futuristic, what, what you would presume to be, like, futuristic SWAT, futuristic special ops military gear. You know, that sort of next-level uh, crazy sort of gear, like uh, Judge Dredd perhaps or something like that right um, that's what you're sort of seeing in these in these individuals that came out with the guns and are moving in a ta uh, tactical way to basically stop the other security guards and to gain control of the situation um, so with that grave maker your easiest plan because of the chaos would be to sort of head around the outside of the room um, using the wall as sort of a way to path your, yourself around to Gregor because like he's on one side of let's say the circle that is the room and you're sort of one third of the way away from him if you went around the outside whereas if you went through the middle you could manage it that wouldn't be a problem but you would have, still have to deal with the chaos of people coming and going and and all these sorts of things right okay um well i'm gonna i am gonna try and uh skirt around and get towards the rest of the group okay but um the briefcase in hand mm -hmm. um and one of my other hands is gonna sort of i'm gonna have it behind my back and grip the um, the handle of boop. Okay. I was gonna ask, was it Betty or was it boop? Okay. <laughs> oh, well, we found out it was oh, boop. It's awesome. people. Okay, so all of you make your way amongst the chaos to where you eventually join with each other. While these motions are taking place, a, a sort of bloody but quick and precise battle or skirmish takes place in which these armored individuals immediately take out the security as though they had planned exactly where they would be. They were aware of the sorts of armors, etc., and gear that they might have, and they were ready to deal with them. The moment that you hear those precise shots in pairs, blah, 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 and the security guards across the room in different shots from different groups are going down quickly. Immediately see individuals that are members of these armored teams throwing these small little pucks across the ground. They go sliding into the room and smoke tufts through the room. Um, the smoke is thick and smells sulfuric almost. There is a, a pepperiness to it, a burning sensation to it. You can tell that this is sort of like riot smoke, something that's meant to, uh, you know, sort of stop crowds of people or things like that as though they're trying to, uh, you know, presumably control the situation and keep people from being able to engage them, whatever the case may be. Um, How hard would it be to smash a window? Um, they're reinforced glass. It wouldn't be hard, but you are almost, you're 30 plus stories in the air. You could smash the window, but it would be a matter of where would you go from there? I mean, there are ways. Well, I'm, I'm not saying the smoke out. Oh, to get the, the smoke. smoke out? Sure, you could start yeah. trying to smash open one of the windows. I will let you know that it's going to be, it's going to take some time because as I said, these this is like sort of reinforced uh, uh, windows and glass. Mm. So it will take you a bit of time, but you can do it. That is definitely something you can do. Would you like to do that? Would that be something that the group wants? Could, would clearing the smoke give us an advantage? Considering the smoke would, I assume, give us a disadvantage to well, put these guys on. It's a two-part. If we chose, it's it's sort of a double-edged sword, right? The smoke mm. is about to provide you with an opportunity to hide your number, perhaps mm. using it if you so wish to slip away. You're not really sure what they're aware of in the smoke. Can they see? Obviously, as I said, they had some sort of rebreathers attached to those black uh, yeah. masks, so perhaps they're not affected by the actual smoke itself. Yeah. But the question becomes, how well can they see you? Um, and, and then I would say it's up to the group to determine, do you wish to engage what, what looks to be 20 plus individuals all heavily armed and armored um, in a situation with other chaos around you? Or do you wish to use this opportunity to perhaps escape for the time being or escape from the situation, or even trying to escape from the tower completely. Um, Clocks, you have something, go ahead. Uh, I quickly flipped a coin and the answer is we need to get the truck out of here. Okay, so Clocks wants to get out. Uh, Gravemaker, what's, up, what's on your mind, bud? I was basically gonna be like, we need to get the hell out. Okay. It makes sense. Tactically, it makes sense that you're you're being ambushed by a superior force with presumably superior weapons at this point. You definitely need to regroup, rethink, form a new strategy. Gravemaker, what's up? 
I am going to start directing the team down the same corridor that Vane went down. Okay. So you bring them basically back nearby where you were standing, taking the outside of the room. Um, does everyone follow with Gravemaker? Okay. Is there anything else? Should... Oh, go ahead. I'm wondering if I should try and nab one of them to take with us. Oh, okay. So you're, you're going to want to use the cover of smoke to perhaps grab one of them? Okay. Yeah, I mean, might sure. be able to rush rush one of them down if they sure. maybe if they have pairs, we could incapacitate one, steal the other, and then just dip. Sure. Okay. G give it a go. Go ahead and give me a challenge. What would you like to do? Uh, Kimchi, well, did you have something? Go ahead. My, is my go-to. The one thing I was thinking of, you know, um, because like like I was thinking of the whole smoke scenario, right? Mm -hmm. My one of my AKs is smoke before I was uh, kimchi spice, but I was thinking, it, do we know how far away we are from accessing that uh, sweet floor, where I think it's either above us or yeah, below? Yeah, it's one floor or, up. Mm, one floor up. Yeah. Just you know, because of using that cover of smoke to get to a location that might have potential intel or something. You know, just try and think forward. Sure. Um, but but. Uh, I guess this is my question. Is that in a different direction than where Gravemaker suggested, following the corridor of Vane? Yes, the, the corridor that Vane headed down was a back corridor that you presume would eventually lead to some sort of emergency exit or stairs or something like that, but is not on its way back to the elevators. It was one of, the, as I had talked about when you first initially arrived, the labyrinth of corridors that lead off to offices and stuff. It was one of those varied uh, corridors and such. Um, I do want to return to Krakor, though, because he was in the midst of something, and I do want to make sure that we focus in on that. So, Krakor, you had planned to snatch one member, let's say at the back of one of these teams, because they're moving in units. So your plan was to use the chaos of everyone moving around, the raw power of gunfire and sounds and things like that, and your hope is to just bash one over the head or grab it yeah, and I'm throw it down the hallway. What are you thinking? Just ru absolutely rushing somebody down, and then just like, even if I have to just smack the gun out of the head and pick him up, I'm just gonna take him with me. Sure, you're just basically just, gonna like, sort yeah. of like, pick the dude yeah. up, fireman's carry, and just start just, huffing it? Yeah. Oh, nice, okay, yeah, go exactly. ahead, give me give me a, a challenge for that, yeah. Alright, I'll roll. Well, Craig, you're doing like that, a... I'm like, oh, go ahead. Is there a way to get like advantage from somebody assisting me or something yes. like that? Yes, um, in fact, one of your team members could in fact spend one of their edge or stress and add a plus oh, okay. one to your dice. Uh, Gravemaker, did you have something? What's up, bud? I was going to assist him. Perfect. So Gravemaker is going to spend. What I was... Perfect. So Gravemaker is going to spend okay, one of their stress. Let's say that he helps you distract the other unit or something like that. Maybe he yeah, bumps into one squads. of them. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. And so, uh, go ahead and what, what were you gonna roll, Krigger? Scramble. That's my. Scramble. That's my bet. Okay, so no, your scramble just, was three dice normally. Yeah. So go ahead and add plus one dice to that, so you get to roll four total dice. Yeah. And what is the highest yeah. value, or do you have two sixes? A six and a five. A six. So full success. Double. Gravemaker moves in, following your lead, smacks into one of the guys uh, to, to sort of draw his attention with the chaos of people going everywhere, them shooting at security guards. Krager, you grab one, lifting it up like a football player and just immediately into a fireman's carry. And you are running down the hallway, smoke billowing into the corridor behind the four of you. You eventually enter into this labyrinth of corridors with uh, a four part sort of corridor going in either direction. You have a, a few different ways you can go. You can see that there's a sign pointed up that says escape, like, you know, fire escape, and it points down one of them off ahead of you. And then there are two corridors, one that goes to the left, one that goes to the right, and it seems to be more office spaces and things like that. Which direction do you guys want to head? You reckon they hadn't planned of people trying to get out? Like, you reckon there's probably going to be more on the escape? So you guys are taking a moment to think about it. So let's say you're round the corner for a second, getting out of line of sight, and then you guys are like checking in. You're like, what do we what do we think we want to do here? Okay. Um, I saw some other fingers go up really quick. I just want to check in about those. Was there was there a finger or was that to respond to Craigor? Oh, I was going to respond to Craigor. Okay, so uh, if you guys don't have anything you need from me in this specific moment, I will step away and let you interact with each other. Go ahead. 
So, Craiger, where are we going with this? This, this man that you have on your shoulder. Interrogation. <laughs> So, by the way, he's, like, fighting you and stuff, and at one point, we'll say you wrench the gun out of his hand, and he's like, yeah. Anyways. I'm gonna, like, full hand grab on his helmet and, like, crunch and try and rip the helmet off his head, basically. <laughs> yeah. Was... I'm real curious how, 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 you know, is this a struggle for you to hold this one man right now? Because there's, like, a dude <laughs> out there. No. Oh, Okay. Because <laughs> I'm all about going down that escape route. Because I think it's better to run out of a of a burning building than hide in one. Okay. Box. I saw Can your I finger come up. Did you have something? Sorry, sorry to interrupt. I just. Oh no! I was gonna be like, well, let's. If it's no struggle, let's get the truck out of here. <laughs> oh, well, then feel free to return to the role play. Go ahead and keep interacting. My apologies. Hmm. Oh. Gregor is done. Gregor is with you. Let's go. I smack the dude in the head. Gregor's with us. Let's go. <laughs> so as you pull the mask off of his face, there's this sort of depressurization that you can see. It's mm -hmm. obvious that it's sort of a hermetically sealed suit. You pull it off. And you see a, a person, just a, a normal person, shaved head underneath, obvious military tattoo on their face with their sort of military or presumably corporate serial number or something of that variety. Obviously not USEC or something like that. It seems to be some sort of corporate brand. Yeah, go ahead. My history is actually a military soldier. Do I recognize that at all? Yes, you recognize this as a, a, a normal thing that happens amongst like sort of mercenary corp units, um, units that... Uh, probably were previously some sort of military or at least trained amongst uh, corporation militaries um, or went privatized to corporations. Um, it's sort of their, their branding in a sense, like their tattoo, their number in a sense. And it's common, it's common place to have the tattoo. They don't always necessarily have it on their face, but this guy specifically has it on his face. And it looks like a, a interesting band of like, sort of like black little lines and things like that, that all sort of interconnect different places. It's not specifically a number. It's more of like, imagine a barcode that gets scanned. Um, so it, it does as a tattoo, too, it still sort of looks cool, but at the same time, it's like information, right? So, um, you don't recognize the specific idiosyncrasies of which corporation it, it, it represents, at least for the time being, until you're able to scan it or spend more time looking at it. Um, was there anything else from anybody else? Or are you guys just continuing on your plan of escaping? I tell the person I'm carrying to stop squirming or I'll break their legs. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> like they're still trying to fight you. By the way, he's like trying to punch you and stuff like that, and you're just sort of holding him, like almost like he's a baby. Basically, you're just like, nope, none of that, and you just keep on going, you know, as though it's a kid throwing a fit, and you're just like, daddy doesn't care, you know. Uh, Clocks, yeah. did you have something? He's saying if you don't stop squirming, he's going to break your legs. And the guy like spits at you and is like, shut up, I'm gonna kill you. You know, he's just freaking out, basically. <laughs> Say, what was that, Krieger? I'll break one of his arms. Oh, jeez, okay. Okay. <laughs> so you just, you're running, running down the hallway towards the fire escape. You just stop for a second. You just go, crunch. Uh, I won't even make you roll for it because you've got this guy basically helpless. And you just, bam, he's like, ah, he starts screaming. There's the, there's the pop of bone, obviously. It doesn't show through the armor, but you can, he's just screaming bloody murder. Um, you hear some footsteps off in the corridors behind you as though someone's like coming this direction to see what's going on. But right in that moment, you guys are nearing the fire stairway escape. Um, Gravemaker, did you have something? What's up? Uh, I'm going to draw Boop and kind of keep an eye behind us now. Uh, like, I'll take the back of the... Uh, I'll basically take the six and um, let those three move ahead of me a little bit and I'll I'll be keeping an eye out behind us. Okay. Um, does anybody else have anything before you guys head into what I pre I presume you're all heading into the, the fire escape stairway sort of space? Okay. Yeah. So you slam through the door, opening it. It's obviously not locked. You head into the stairway, and immediately as the door shuts be behind the five of you technically, you one of you peeks over the edge, whoever wishes to peek, um, per, you know, 
perhaps clocks or, or a grave maker, perhaps all of you peek. You peek over the edge and you can see many, many, many floors beneath you of stairway. Oh. And at the bottom, you see movements, black little shapes, just barely poking out, moving up the stairway, albeit very, very far beneath you. You have some time. If you wanted to go down, you could, but you'd only be able to presumably head down at least maybe five to ten floors before you eventually run into whoever those people are that are coming up the stairs. You also have um, two more floors above you. You have the suite, and then presumably you have roof access up above that. Um, so which direction would you like to go? I can't hear you, Indio. Oh no, I, I, my bad. I was thinking out loud. Oh, okay. Um, because I, my, I'm trying to figure out what, with the kind of business and relationship we have with the two brothers, would we know what kind of resources they might have on the roof? Like, do they have? Like, would we know? Like, oh, they have a helicopter. Or, you know what I mean? I'm not trying to be like, like you know, far fetched, but it's just I'm trying to figure out is it, is it? Are we gonna be sitting ducks running up? to the roof or is that um, like oh that's the next best they do plan. have a corporate helicopter however you're not sure if it was landed you didn't see it and it's you obviously mm. can't see it from the ground so there is a chance that it's up there but you know you're you're chancing it at that point grave maker did you have something uh i just i wanted to offer the option this could be a good time for a flashback moment Perhaps, yes. As long as it doesn't uh -oh. interrupt the current fiction. Does someone have a flashback or something like that? Well, Indio was saying that he was hoping to figure out if he, if he had ever figured out information with, with Hugo or Kevin. Oh, about so, the helicopter? About anything, about the area, whatever, right? Like I, that, that he was hoping for some, like what kind of resources they have, what what would be like the layout, whatever, something. Oh, sure. Like, I mean, if he wants to do a flashback for that, yeah, we can totally, we can totally do that. It won't even require a roll, but it would just require you to spend one of your edge, basically. Would you, you like to what? do that? I like that idea. Thank you, sure. my man. Sure. So you spend the edge for the flashback. So basically, we go back to a moment in time in which uh, Chi or Kim Chi. Uh, Spice was engaging in a conversation with Hugo. You think back to a time that you and him were sitting at a diner after a job that you guys had done for him. Everyone sort of headed on their way, and it was just the two of you sort of kicking back over a cup of coffee, you know, late into the night. And you were just at, talking about stuff, and, and you guys got talking about, you know, finance and, and business and all these things. And you remember Hugo specifically saying that, you know, despite all of his success, he doesn't want to get stuck in the trappings of having you know this sort of wealth and things um he he likes to travel like people travel he likes to you know ride in a taxi and ride his bike and and use uh, public transportation or pay a you know uber or you know the shadow equivalent of uber a, a, a cuber or whatever whatever it's called you know um he, he he likes being a person um and he wants to have those moments those real moments to interact with people and so you know and, and you guys maybe joked about it you're like yeah but you could have a helicopter and go wherever you want and he's like yeah but do i really need one you know do i really need one really um and you remember he was like plus we got to put the satellite up there um for the you know for the the, the sensor um and so you remember as you're thinking about it chi uh that you know, they obviously didn't put a helicopter pad up there because that's where one of their giant tower arrays is sitting. It's basically off the top of of the Meyer Tower, Meyer's Tower. So you would remember that. You would be thinking, wait, is there a helicopter? Oh, no, shit, that's right. You know, that sort of thing. It all kind of comes back to you in that moment. And you're like, okay, there's uh -huh. definitely not an escape on the roof. Hmm. So feel free to roleplay that maker. to the rest of the crew because you're sort of the only one that knows that at this point. So go ahead. And so I'm sitting here going, okay, taking a moment I, mm, to recollect my thoughts. The roof is definitely not our option. Damn. Mm. We, would be, we would definitely be sitting ducks on the roof. So our next best bet would be the suite. Because going down we're literally going to be facing a potential army of these soldiers. We have access to one of their radios because I'm carrying one of them. We could tell them that the staircase is clear. I wish I spoke troll. 
Oh, so that's <laughs> sounds like a great idea. We have one of them. Uh, we have one of their radios, and we can tell them that stairway is clear. Craig Ort, another great idea. Yeah. Set the condition that if he doesn't, he'll break his other arm. Apparently, oh, I set the condition that if he doesn't, he'll break his other arm. So as, as time has sort of lapsed forward in these moments, and you guys are figuring out where you're going, by the way, the shock of him breaking his arm has slowly sort of put him into a stupor, and now he's at that point where he's, like, falling, like into shock and and, is, and more or less is falling unconscious you know because of the the like when you break your jaw or when you have any sort of extreme pain eventually your body will just knock you out and be like we're not dealing with that so you can tell he's getting to that point so he's he's getting more and more limp he's sort of slurring like fire you. you know like that <laughs> sort of thing um but yeah so he's, he's much easier to control however he is falling unconscious so uh yeah i just wanted to point that out so everybody's aware of that right Do we have any medical people like as a part of the group, this is an out of character kind of business. I think most of you are no. mostly action oriented. You could try to give them very limited medical things. You also know that your doc is was was last you know back in the room, so you don't know what happened to him after you guys bounced. But you do know that there's a doctor oh. presumably somewhere in the building. Oh man, uh, could we use the the mic, Craigor? One of us who speak English? Would that be too risky? Go ahead. You he know? says go ahead. Go ahead? Okay. I'm like, okay. Um, oh, I'm like, uh, I, I'm going to go for it. Or, or go ahead, Mike. Okay, I just wanted to check in. A little while ago, Clocks or uh, Olivia had held up their hand. Were you, waiting, were you waiting to interact in the RP, or was there something else you had? I just want to check in about that real quick. Oh, I just wanted us to uh, get into a room and not be standing on in the uh, emergency. Oh, so stairs. you wanted to say, "Hey, we're still in the stairway. We should get moving," kind of a thing. That's what. Oh, yeah. Feel feel free, especially if other people are engaging in role play, just to sort of. I know you guys are. You know, we're all sort of experiencing this together for the first time here in this way. Just feel free to join in organically, right? Like it's a a, a conversation. Only only feel like you need to interrupt if, like, especially if I'm talking or something like that. Otherwise, if you guys are all chatting with each other. Feel free to just have it be organic, like you're like, wait, we need to stop standing here. You know what I mean? So, yeah, in, in the future, you guys are, especially when you're interacting, feel free to just have it be a conversation, right? So, Guys, um, we so, need to hook it up. There you go. Up. Up. At least for the time being. I got to agree with that. Okay. So, up, we go. up you go. Up the stairway to the suite, you hit the, the the escape door, you open it up, and you enter into, for the time being, what it seems like to be an empty room. Um, there's no one here. There's no security. There's no people. Myers Brothers aren't here. But what you see is a collection of beautiful antiquities and art set out before you. You see art set onto the walls and set into uh, viewing containers in the all over the space. This room feels more like an actual like art gala than it does like an actual living space. And then you see as you look off, you see that there are a few different sort of corridors off and behind one of them you can see what looks to be like sort of a makeshift apartment. And the makeshift apartment has these large frosted glass sort of walls or windows. But you can't really see what's happening inside other than shapes or forms. I mean, it's definitely not like a bathroom or a bedroom where anyone would be naked or anything like that, but it seems to be like a private space where perhaps someone might, you know, uh, drink a, a, a glass of coffee in the morning or uh, engage in some light reading at midday or uh, be typing away on their computer or something like that. Um, and so you're in this space, uh, this beautiful art and antiquities and things all around you. Where are you guys going from here? Are you running away to one of those private rooms in hopes to sort of hide yourselves? I, I believe that was sort of your plan. What are you doing? Is there a first aid kit? You don't see one immediately. Um, perhaps in one of the rooms? Craig, or toss down that dude and let's block off the door so they can't barge in if we're in the middle of interrogating this guy. Sounds like a plan to me, too. Okay, so oh. you toss him down. He's unconscious. He falls down with sort of a wet thud. You start to gather different things, bookshelves, sofas, things that you can, setting them in front of this door. 
Um, you find that there are an other, there's another set of doors, double doors, and they lead to some sort of long stairway. And as you think about where you are in the building, you realize that perhaps this stairway is the same stairway that leads to those executive offices down below. And perhaps there was a, another walkway to get up here. I, I presume you also reinforce and, and sort of block out that door, trying to prevent people from being able to maybe see through it or come through it, that sort of thing. Yeah? Mm. Okay. So you reinforce the space to the best of your ability. Is there any you, techie stuff that uh, Olivia's character can do to, like, deny access to that? Because they wouldn't just be, like, generic push pull doors right no yeah in fact you're correct there there are there are in fact there is a sort of door panel system um and if clocks wanted to they could sort of connect into that system and just perhaps you know lock the doors um and for, for the time being the doors are not locked craig do you have more also we're, we're in the suite does this have access to like the subnet or something can we check cameras anything like that if we check the rooms do we find any surveillance systems or something if you check the rooms, perhaps you might, but currently because you're in the big room and you've just been moving stuff in the way of the doors, you haven't found anything quite yet. Um, Clocks, did you have something? Oh, I was going to do the uh, security thing. Oh, sure, uh, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead and do that roll. I'm going to presume Krager is looking around for some sort of security space or something like that. Um, Gravemaker, did you have something? Um, I'm going to try and find somewhere that I can get hidden but in a, uh, some kind of advantageous space and start putting Popeye together. Okay. Ooh. So you, uh, we'll say you like find a space where you have like eye line to both of the doors, one over off to one side, one to the emergency door, kind of down a tiny bit of a hallway, a short hallway. Um, and you kind of set yourself as a V at, a, at the V point center. So you can see both sides. Maybe you wheel over a few things or you sit behind a pillar, dropping your case, starting to put together your rifle. Okay, so, uh, Craig, or when you're in the back room, you head down some of these back hallways, and you do eventually find one of the uh, the doors is marked uh, security. Um, you very easily, for your size and mass, just sort of bash the door open. Um, it, it is, it is it, in some ways, like, you can tell it has a keypad on it, but you presumably, I, I mean, I'm not going to assume you just bash it open if you don't want to, but... Just, uh, I try and rip it open, like, you know, in, in okay. the side of the So it's Craig Orr unlocks the door, and he's just sort of, blam, and it goes, pop. there's this pop as the deadbolt sort of breaks out, and then the door opens, and you see there is uh, uh, no one inside the room. There is a sort of wall of cameras. Um, think of more of, like, actual, like, hologram images that sort of come up off of this, like, desktop thing that are sort of projected up in front of you, and you're seeing all these different views and things like that. Um, and so I'll return to you, though, in a moment. I'm going to return back to Clocks and see where you're at with that role. Go ahead, Clocks. I got a six and a one. So... Ooh, a full success. So, Clocks, you hack in using extra here you actually literally like you grab one of your tools pop open the panel go inside find a little cord connecting the cord to your comm link you start thumbing through something and what you discover is um there seems to be some sort of routing program that is currently happening that seems to be shifting the entire building into lockdown mode it is locked out of your control and seems to be on some sort of administration privileges, which you don't currently have. You have access to the current door you're near and the doors in this room, but anything outside of this space, it seems that they've tried to internalize each individual space to have sort of its own protocol to where you would have to simultaneously hack every single floor in order to get through their security. Um, as I had said, state-of-the-art security, you know, sort of the cream of the crop. Um, and it makes sense. And you're kind of thinking back to yourself and realizing you're like, you kind of helped create this idea. You're like, well, what if it had these sorts of things to make it really hard for someone to just hack through your whole system? And you're having that moment where you're like, why am I so good at my job? You know, <laughs> like that, that sort of oh, thing. Man. Yeah. Okay. So uh, you, you see that that's happening. Why you are so able good? to... Yeah, right. You are able to access the specific door you're at. You lock it down immediately and lock down the fire escape door. Um, so you guys are secured within this space. Uh, Craker, I'm going to check back with you because I thought I saw your finger up. So uh, did I? 
Are the uh, other? Well, I mean, might as well now that sure, we're here. Are, sure. are the cameras on? Because if I, yes, I if I can't like if I can't work them, you oh, know, you, then I you have no idea how to work. I mean, you could try to challenge. Yeah. Would you like to do a basically a computer's role, which I uh, I believe is the uh, bottom most skill or something like that? Said I can get experience from it, so why not? <laughs> okay, sure. You can do a desperate action to try and <laughs> under, understand toggle switch things. Okay, sure, yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, it is... Uh, where is it? I'm trying to remember. Where's that skill? Interface. Apologies. Interface. That well, would be the skill. I can guarantee I don't have a point in it, so okay. what do I roll? <laughs> uh, you would roll two dice and keep the two lowest. Dice, uh, yeah. Keep the lowest, right? Keep you got lowest. it. Damn, I got a six and a two. That would have been good if it wasn't That would have been if it hadn't been a two. So, <laughs> Krager reaches over and he's like, I've got this. And he just starts smacking the hologram. And there's like, bleep, 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 and like things are like sort of shifting and changing. And then eventually, Krager just sees himself in a room, seeing himself in a room, ah! seeing himself in a room. Oh, there's an intruder. You know. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah. um, There's this big troll guy here. There's a big troll guy. Guys, guys, we got a problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, so so Gregor is uh, sort of <laughs> in, a, in a bad situation. I mean, he hasn't broken the machine or anything, but I mean, who knows what sort of trouble right. this troll that he sees will cause. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay, so now clock. I gotta get clocks. Uh, yeah, after so Craig was like, ah, you know, you hear him call out to you, and clocks eventually heads in and feel free. Uh, clocks, you you walk into the room, and let's. Uh, I just want to check it actually real quick before we get to that scene. Did Gravemaker or Kim Chi have anything that they were doing other than just sort of holding down the space, being ready for anything? I'm meditating at the moment. Okay, Kim Chi is meditating, can... sort of thinking to himself, like, right, this is a lie, right? Sort of processing. Okay, cool. Um, Grave Maker, you're still holding down the fort, kind of watching both doors, making sure everything's safe. Uh, yep. Clocks presumably had given you the signal. She's like, I locked it, you know, that sort of thing. Um, and then here's Krager calling. Clocks, you walk into the room. Go ahead. What were Freaks. you trying to do? <laughs> oh. I broke it. <laughs> it's all right. I can fix it. I know most of this setup anyway. I, I won't even make you roll clocks because you're <laughs> like <laughs> you're just like you're just like oh no oh, Craker you just sort of flip it up like yeah. bloop, 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 and you fix it and then it's back to the bloop, all the screens of different places and as you're both yeah, looking at it now gone. yeah and, and as you're looking at it now um, you can see that the security protocols seems to have engaged the the very bottom floors have locked down completely to where they have like steel shutters and reinforced bars basically like dropping down over every entrance way and every exit especially on ground level all the parking garages everything is just um and it, and it that continues upwards shutters closing on windows anti-terrorism attack sort of things and and you see this happening floor after floor after floor working its way up towards the top right um and you're able to see that visually. Whereas you had known it was sort of happening beforehand, Clocks. Krager, you're seeing this for the few, the first time. You, and you're seeing these <laughs> armed individuals on several floors, mostly the ground floor. But it seems like as you're watching the ground floor cam, as those security protocols fall into place and the walls come down, the, the they walk up to the elevator and you can see one of them has some sort of card key and he just goes whoop and swipes it. The elevator opens, he walks inside, like the group of them walk inside and you know the door shut, that sort of thing. Um, so it seems like whoever these people are and however they did it, they've gained access to the building. And presumably, if they're the ones that caused the software to enter the system, they have some sort of administrative control. 